Welcome to Bucks Insider presented by Verizon. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith continuing our off-season coverage of the Bucks, and there's just never a boring week. The NFL has managed to be relevant all year round, and even right now in this off-season with a bunch of different changes, as much as we kind of hated to lose coaches, it's definitely kept things interesting for a little while and kept us with some news headlines to get to, and I know that uh, we have officially some new coaches that we've brought on that we can announce. In fact, they, I think we just like a minute ago officially announced it. You've probably seen some of the names out there, but this pretty much um, fills out the rest of the offensive staff. Uh, it wasn't a one-for-one -one replacement. Some positions, like we don't have a run game coordinator like we had last year. So the hires today are wide receiver coach Brian McClendon, who comes to us from Georgia, where he just helped coach up Ladd McConkey, who might go in the first round. Uh, obviously, Georgia did very well, so any connection he has to that is good. Um, from the Dolphins, we hired Josh Grizzard to be pass game coordinator. That's a position that we didn't have last year, so that's new. And then from Liam, he worked with Liam Cohen at the University of Kentucky. Brian Picucci is the new assistant offensive line coach, which was not a position we had last year. So there's been a little bit mixing around of the actual positions, but I think they're to the point now where they've finished filling out the staff. And great for, you know, before combine, before free agency, before yeah. draft, kind of know how everybody feels, get in all the coaches, all the staff, know what they're looking for. I'm sure that helps with all everybody being on the same page as you go into some of yeah, these big I th moments. I think the biggest part of that is you have a new offensive coordinator and you want to get that staff filled out as quickly as possible so they can start working because he has to translate his offense to them so that they can then teach it to the players. And that's, that's starting now. Like, they're not waiting. In fact, I'm not sure that the offensive guys are even going to go to the combine because it's more important to them to get work, get to work on installing the system. And you brought up a wide receiver coach. We've talked about pass game coordinator, and this is an interesting thing this time of year. I mean, A, we still don't know a lot about what's going to happen in free agency, but as of what the wide receiver room has looked like in recent years, these are people that have some, some fun weapons to play <laughs> with and have just put up numbers that are so incredible in recent years. Yeah, Brian McClendon has a nice coaching track record, but this is his first hop to the NFL, I believe. And um, he inherits... Now, you, you brought up the point. It's not sure yet. The Bucks, I'm sure, are hoping to resign Mike Evans. We'd all love for Mike Evans to be a Buccaneer for life, and obviously he's still a fantastic player. And if you walk in to your first NFL room as a wide receivers coach, and it's Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and some others too, but especially those two, wow. I mean, between the two of them, in the last five years, they've – they put up 9,000-yard seasons, which is about as good as you could possibly do. It's incredible. Ten would be the most you could do between two players, um, and that's the most, no matter how many players are involved, that's the most 1,000-yard seasons by individuals on a team in the last five years. Amazing. And as we talk about this and all the things we don't know about free agency, one of the things happening this time of year is <coughs> the franchise tag mm -hmm. window. So explain the timeline of that, the process okay. of that, and then just... What do we think? Are the Bucks going to use it? Who do they use it on? What yeah. could this look like? So the franchise tag window opened Tuesday, two days ago. It's a two-week thing, so it'll stop on March 5th, eight days before the start of free agency at 4 p.m. So for, well, I guess now about 12 more days, teams around the NFL can choose whether or not to put one franchise or a transition tag on a play. You can only do one and a year. And... Uh, and really usually about eight, seven or eight teams do it. So a lot of teams don't end up doing it because they just don't have a player who's in the right spot for it. What you need to have is a player that's going to be a free agent, uh, a player obviously that you want to keep, and a player where the compensation from the franchise, franchise tag makes sense for what you would probably pay this guy. And um, so, you know, the Bucks have some candidates. I'm not sure how, you know, Baker Mayfield, you talk about that. The quarterback tag is very, very, very high. It'd probably be like, $30 million, something like that. Um, you've got Mike Evans. I don't know this long in his career if that's something they would want to do with him because a lot of time players don't really like it in the franchise tag. you got Antoine Winfield. have seen that name out there a lot. That could be a guy that fits because obviously he's a great player, first team all pro this season. And the best thing about the franchise tag, when it works out great for everybody, is when it's used successfully to basically extend the uh, exclusive negotiating period. So right now we're the only team that can negotiate with Antoine Winfield, but on March 11th, which is the beginning of the legal tampering period, uh, anybody can. Mm -hmm. And so if you put that franchise tag on them, ex at least the exclusive one, they can't negotiate with other teams. And as you can see here, it's been done set with the Bucks have used a franchise tag seven times in their history. Pretty frequently recently, three yeah. of the last four years, and Chris Godwin's listed there twice. That's why there's only six names. But it's been done seven times. And in this right-hand column you see over here is what eventually happened. After the franchise tag, did the Bucks and that player come to a long-term deal? And you can see most of the times they have. 
I mean, there's been some different situations. But that was, in Paul Gruber, that was the very first year, and Paul Gruber is in the Ring of Honor, one of the most beloved Buccaneers ever, an awesome dude, so I'm not saying anything negative, but he was very upset about it. It was a whole new thing, and a lot of players didn't like it, and he held out. Yeah. And th this was a guy who, through his first five seasons in the NFL, had never missed a single offensive snap. So he missed games for the first time. He held out for five games, and they got a long-term deal done. Some of them were easier. You know, Chris played on the tag his first year, and in the second year they got a deal done like a week after getting the tag. Um, another guy that could be a candidate is a kicker, Chase McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. It seems weird to say franchise player for a kicker, but teams have done that a lot because yeah, you saw Connor Barth up yeah, there. Yeah, Connor Barth's up there, and then uh, he got a long-term deal after that too. And the reason you see kickers get franchise tags is because – Compared to the other positions, that's a pretty low tag. That makes I sense. don't know what it is, maybe four million or yeah. something. Whereas uh, I think Antoine would probably be around sixteen million, right? 17, yeah, something it's like gonna that. It's going to be interesting to see. All right, and then we know the combine is starting next week. So, what are some of the big uh, storylines you're watching, or things that you feel like Bucks fans should be paying attention to at the combine? Well, just to give you a little procedural bit, it'll start next Monday. Uh, that's when everybody arrives. The actual workouts don't start until the 29th, um, but on Tuesday is a big day for fans of teams because both the head coach and the general manager of each team goes to the podium in the big interview room and spends about half hour there. And then at least our guys, Jason Light and uh, Todd Bowles, will also then go to a table in another spot and sit down with the locals for another 15, 30, 45 minutes, something. So over the course of about an hour, they touch on a lot of topics. So you get a lot of nuggets, you get a lot of pieces of news, and they're gonna be asked about all these free agents. So it'll be the first time they've talked about that in a while. So. Keep, uh, stay tuned for that. Bree Dix, our uh, team writer reporter, Brianna, she will be there covering it live. Uh, but we'll also have the videos on the website so you can see what they say when they're at the podium. Um, but why are, why are they there? Why is Jason and all his people there and, and a lot of the coaches? Because it's a chance to see all these players. And they will say every time a 40-yard dash isn't what changes their mind. The film is what matters mm -hmm. most. But I still think when a guy goes there, and does something that makes everybody go, wow. Yeah, you light it up. That might cement your spot a little bit. And mm -hmm. if you look back in recent years, the Bucks have had some pretty, the Bucks have ended up drafting some guys that had some pretty uh, amazing combine performances. I assume that's Kalijah there. It looks like it, yep. And he ran a 4.67, I believe. It's ridiculous. For, at that size. It was the fastest 40 yard dash by a defensive lineman since 2003. All right, so he's showing you there, yeah, I got speed. And look at Tristan Morris. I mean, we all remember that. Yes, and that did translate to the field <laughs> for sure. That 4.85 40-yard dash was the fastest among the offensive linemen. Uh, and then he those vertical leap and broad jump numbers are huge too. So he was just big. Zion McCollum ran a 4.3340. And I don't remember how they put it all together, but 99 athleticism score is actually the maximum. Incredible. So the, he, he was... Incredible athletic athlete. athletic as you can get. Yeah, he's an athlete. We know that Trey Palmer ran really, really fast, and we know that's the main reason why the Bucks actually traded a pick to draft him. So um, it can make a difference. Yeah. So keep an eye on those workouts. See the guys that maybe have, you know, a 4.340 yard dash or they do the bench press 50 times or something, you know, just those guys help themselves. Yep, that's going to be interesting. And, you know, since we already talked about the wide receiver group a little bit earlier in the show, we figured this is a good time to use them as our position breakdown for the draft. That each week on Insider, we have been talking about a different position group and saying, how likely is it this is a high pick for yeah. the Bucks? So, wide receiver, do you yeah. see that being a round one, maybe round two type sure. of selection? Yeah, we've already talked about safety, interior lineman, and defensive end or outside linebacker. Uh, but I do think wide receiver is a position the Bucks could target. And unfortunately, well, we'll know by then. Unfortunately, one of the reasons could be if they don't manage to re-sign Mike Evans. Again, as we already said, we really hope that happens, and, and we all want that to happen. But you have to acknowledge the fact that he could become a free agency free agent and not be a Buccaneer. But even if Mike is back, um, it still wouldn't hurt to plan for the future there a little bit. I know Trey Palmer did a good job as a, as a third receiver, but maybe a, a, you could get another guy to add to the mix. And the other half of that equation is because of – all the prolific offenses on the college level now, there's almost never a bad receiver class anymore. Every receiver class, it seems like there's good guys, and there's enough good guys to go into the second and third round. So yeah, I could see no matter what happens with Mike, but especially if Mike departs, wide receiver being something they target early. First round, definitely a possibility, but there will be some available in the second round. All right, well, we are going to talk a lot more about the draft in the coming weeks, including our show Road to the Draft, where we talk about some individual prospects. Are they guys we feel like we could see on the Bucks? So make sure you stay tuned to Buccaneers.com for that, and we'll see you next time.